Greetings to viewers. It's Music Month, and we're here at NTN Studios with a gathering of very knowledgeable and experienced people in the music and production industry. And we're here to bump heads and to try to understand the way forward for the music industry, where we have come from, where we're going to, and where we're at. Um, music Month, it's been designated by Friends of St. Cecilia and the government of St. Lucia to commemorate the achievements of musicians, music productions, and us as St. Lucians and where our music industry is going. In studio today, on my extreme right, we have Mr. Jason Darius, who is a producer, producer of the Daily segment, I mean radio announcer personality, is very active in the current situation as it pertains to our music. On his left, we have Mr. Ian Sanchez, no stranger to the industry as a promoter and also representing ECHO as the deputy chairperson of the Eastern Caribbean Collective Organization. To his left, we have Mr. Lennon Blaise Prosper. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're going back. Rhythm Crazy. I mean, this guy had everybody gyrating from the 80s and 90s, moved into the Calypso Arena. He's a writer, producer, and even an activist, and, and one who wants to see the formalization of the music industry, the, 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 the business aspect of the, the music industry as it what comes back to the musicians and producers definitely is on his plate. He's been an advocate and also um, a member of Balance Inc. Inc. And that's a very recently formed organization who are particularly interested in the business of music as to what comes out of these productions moving forward, what, what, what are the benefits um, even as musicians get older and um, the music industry itself, what, what, what could be um, um, derived from forming partnerships with different regional and international organizations. So rather than forming clubs and societies, they're looking to formulate um, business um, entities and collaborations. So once again, welcome to Music Month. My name is Buffalo Adlam. Today, as your presenter, as we deal with the business of music. Once again, it is St. Cecilia's Day, so in advance, I'm asking you to look forward to St. Cecilia's Day on the 22nd. It's going to be big. And all musicians and music lovers will look out. So we are here trying to decide as to the direction that the industry goes. So first and foremost, I will, Mr. Jason Darius. So we're going to put pro, <laughs> pose that question to you. Know, should, should St. Lucian radio stations mm -hmm. play more local and more Caribbean music? Well, definitely, I think so, because most of the complaints that you hear, I mean, especially from the artists on the ground, that they don't get that airplay, especially in other not-so-popular genres, uh, such as the R&B and hip-hop genres here in St. Lucia. They're not as popular as, um, for example, the soca, the Denry segment that you have um, popularized nowadays. So I definitely believe there should be at least a quota of uh, Caribbean and St. Lucia music being played on our local airways across the board mm -hmm. so that everybody has a fair share of the pie and when it comes to royalties and disbursements everybody could see that they actually get something from that pie as opposed to I guess just the little crumbs that uh, well, some artists are literally getting now. I mean don't get me wrong especially for October I, I cannot complain when it comes to October our music is heavily rotated on the radio stations mm -hmm. but that has to be more I guess, more sustained throughout the year. Mm -hmm. In October, we get all the Junior Quayle music, all the music from yesteryear. Every single thing Junior Quayle, you actually get it on the radio stations. Mm -hmm. But that has to be a little bit more sustainable in my, in my own perception of things. And it has to be a year-round thing. It cannot be just once for the year. You, you can me? also speak from a, de from a DJ and present a standpoint. Mm -hmm. the, the psyche behind um, a, a, a DJ or individual be, being behind the console, mm -hmm. what, what comes to mind? Is it nationhood? Is it the fact that if I play it, 
the local artists are going to get more royalties or should I play what is popular? What, what, what do you think goes through the psyche of the, the local DJs as to um, the, the fact that it is obvious that most people think not enough local music is being paid, played? And um, why seasonal? Okay. Um, well, the reason why it's seasonal because I guess the landscape that we actually have with the various competitions such as Soka Monarch and Junior Creole, you, you tend to get that seasonal type of uh, vibe on the ground in St. Lucia. But there's a saying that um, a good DJ will play what people want to hear, but a great DJ will play what you didn't even know that you wanted to hear. So mm -hmm. that separates the two, you understand? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, that's very so, interesting. Exactly. So for me, it's just about the level of maturity for a DJ and a radio announcer just knowing what is what and when it's appropriate to play whatever. You cannot just be on the radio playing the most popular stuff all the time. It gets, mm -hmm. it gets boring, it gets stale. I mean, that's how I remember a couple of, of years past, like probably when a new uh, Vibes Cartel or something came out, you would head out on the radio stations, on the buses, everywhere, constantly until like in a matter of weeks, it, people just tired of it. Mm -hmm. you, that cannot work. It has to be something, again, that is sustainable and again, just not really know what people want to hear, but like take people on a journey through the music landscape, especially with the plethora of music that we have here in St. Lucia. I mean, we have some tremendous artists, some tremendous talent here on the ground that really and truly don't even get the opportunity, don't get the airplay that they really deserve. And it's a shame, really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in, in my view, you look at the king of pop, Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. We're speaking about Usher and if we have to go international. And these guys always go back and pay homage to... Exactly. Um, 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 Brown, they, they pay homage to Pussy Sledge, mm -hmm. you know, James Brown. And these names always come up even with the artists who are current now. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to put that question to, to, to Mr. Sanchez, that do you think that there is enough information and appreciation out there for those who were there before? Because we, we couldn't have just gotten there. Neither the Denry segment, the Groovy Soka, or the Power Soka couldn't have just got there. There was Calypso before, there was um, what we call slow or love soca before, love music, mm -hmm. and, and what? So what, what do you think that um, brought about this change, or should I say the non-appreciation of what obtained in the past? Well, good afternoon, Buffalo. Um, basically, I, I hear what you're asking me, but really and truly, a country without a history has no heroes, and we have heroes in San Lucia. Mm -hmm. um, Going back to what, what Jason was saying, Denry Segment music came from the history of solo music, yeah. right? That's where it started. And Denry Segment music is not in any way seasonal. It, we, we get the hits year round, year round 12 months of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and going really and truly based on the fact that we have this music filtering throughout the airwaves, but our young people do not know the history of where it came from. Um, San Lucia music has been struggling for 40 years. Yeah. I mean, we started with the True Tones, then we went to Quavers, then we had the Calypsonian, the hits of Calypso from the 60s, the Mighty Pele. Our young people don't know that history. Um, I think that is something that needs to be written and documented. Yeah. Excellent, and, and I concur because I think we need to know where we came from mm. and what obtains now. And exactly. then it, was, it wasn't, apart from talent is God given, mm -hmm. but then culture has been laced and laid down by our ancestors. And then we have to appreciate that. And in other disciplines and country, there's an appreciation and also a great acknowledgement by the artists for the artists who were there before. In the, in the case oh, yes. of um, Trinidad, like Short Shirt, Barbados, mm -hmm you know, um, red plastic bag and Gabby, and, and, and you just name it, mm -hmm. and these names keep coming up. But you know, it's important that, that you mention that, and that moving forward, we have to understand where we're going to is as a result of where we came from. But Buffalo, yeah. don't get me wrong, you get, yes, you get young producers and, and artists like myself. Um, yeah. 
saying that um, well, we we do have that appreciation for the um, for the years gone by, the artists who have paved the way, the producers who have paved the way for us now. It's just um, going back to what Ian said. It's just that it's not documented. It's not anywhere that it's easily to access. Mm -hmm. You understand? So yeah. you tend to get lost along the way when you're trying to find that information. You understand? Uh, actually, it's when, it's when they die. Yeah. When yeah. they die, then yeah. we remember no, them. Is. Yes. I want you to hold that point, and we're about to take a break, our first break. The world's climate is changing, and that affects all of us. Storms are becoming increasingly intense. Periods of intense drought and heavy rain stress farm animals and destroy our crops. Higher average ocean temperatures kill our coral reefs and change the migratory patterns of fish. St. Lucia contributes only 0.0015% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but is doing its part, along with countries around the world, to reduce the emissions that are warming our world and changing our climate. These efforts are called mitigation. But decades of emissions have already changed the climate, and the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today will increase average global temperatures even more. We need to adapt, that is, do everything we can to prepare for and respond to the actual and expected negative effects of climate change. And everyone has a role to play. We need to protect our crops, build homes that withstand storms, and keep our drains and waterways free of garbage to help us recover or bounce back from climatic events. Learn more about the government of St. Lucia's National Adaptation plan and the steps you can take to protect yourself and your fellow St. Lucians. Yes, we're back again. Uh, it's a music month and um, we're at the studios of NTN. As anything else, we have some very resourced gentlemen there in the creative industry and music and production field. So I move across now to Mr. Um, Lennon, Blaze, Papa Pops, <laughs> Prosper. I mean, that, 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 that name resonates with me from the 80s, the days of Rhythm Crazy. That was a very popular um, band at the time when I had Sound Splash. And there's no doubting that um, this, this young man comes with a, a, a whole arsenal of history in the music and music production industry. So over to you, because I know you're have enough to see where our topic is concerned. Well, uh, good afternoon, and um, thank you for having me on. I am here today in the capacity of um, Blaze as a musician, writer, and also as a member of um, Balance Inc. Mm -hmm. Now, for those who don't know what Balance Inc. is all about, we're a new organization just formed for um, looking after the, the welfare of artists in St. Lucia. We are tired of the, um, the association and clubs. So right now what we want to do is actually have a business entity that's going to look after the welfare of artists. Not a club anymore where artists can make money, can go to work. Mm -hmm. Now, we're about launching in the next uh, week and a half or so. So look forward to that. And we're letting artists know that you can come on board, come register with us because what the, the association have not done for you, that's what we intend to do for you. We are also artists, so we know what you're going through. Now, um, as, as to uh, the talk of music, um, I was listening to um, Jason a while ago, and he said that um, Denry segment is um, not seasonal, and I agree. Mm -hmm. And the reason why Denry segment is not seasonal is because it is popular that DJs are playing it. Now, Soka and Calypso is popular other places too. Mm -hmm. The only thing about it is the DJ is not playing it. Mm -hmm. However, if you look at um, Trinidad Soka, the DJs are playing, playing it. it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it is popular all year round. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what happened to our music that it can't be played all year round? You know, know, I'm just talking about mm -hmm. the Calypso and Soka because I know um, Calypso artists from from other countries that travel all year round just doing Calypso. Mm. I know soca artists who travel all year round just doing um, soca. Yeah. So yes. what is so wrong that we can't do it here? Now, not to cut you short, you know, that <laughs> didn't always used to be the case. 
that didn't always used to be case with Denry segment music because back in the day when it was just starting out, um, people used to call the lyrics raunchy mm -hmm. until there was that sort of demand for it. It used to play underground in the clubs and till it actually got popularized overseas and then came back in. So there was a demand for it. So they really couldn't stop it. I remember when radio stations were banning almost every single Denry segment track. You could not hear Denry segment on radio anywhere. Exactly. That has literally been flipped on its head. You understand? So for me, what I think it should be right is just, uh, I mean, to create that demand, create that sort of marketing platform for whatever um, artistry that we have, whether it be Calypso, Soka, and literally push and start knocking down those barriers, you understand? Yeah. And really I, popularize it. I also believe, I also believe that there should be more education, mm -hmm. not just for the, the general public, but I think there should be more education for the DJs. Yes. Because I think a lot mm -hmm. of DJs just go on the radio mm -hmm. doing their own thing. Yeah. You know, I don't think I, I would want to think that um, I would want to think that there is a, a program director and give them a program. But sometimes I am listening to the radio and I'm even wondering what's going on because it, it all it all seems like a backyard kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like we're in our backyard having fun and, and mm -hmm. you know, I mean and then when our music don't play, guess what? We don't get royalties. Right. So let me come in there. And, and this is, you, you say you're in the business of music to make money, money. and to make a livelihood for the musicians. So let me di direct this question to Mr. Sanchez, who is the, the, the deputy chair of ECHO. And uh, the ECHO is responsible for monitoring and um, um, monitoring the activities, musical activities, as to how much and where the songs are played and the remuneration for artists and writers. Where, where, where do we stand? Mm. Where do we stand as the, where we understand the business of the music and what comes out of the, the royalties paid by Echo? Well, basically, um, Buffalo, Echo represents w music of the world. Um, Currently, less than 10% of St. Lucia music plays on radio. <laughs> so this is where we stand. I would like you to repeat that. Uh, less than 10% of St. Wow. Lucia music plays on St. Lucia. So 90% or of royalties wow. collected goes, goes out of St. Lucia. Lucia. You hear that, St. Lucia? 90%. Are you listening to me, DJs? 90% <laughs> of music played in St. Lucia leaves our shores. Go ahead, Mr. Sassi. So based on this, I mean, ECHO is an organization that represents music of the world, as I said. As on that basis, ECHO monitors the radio stations, and that's why I can tell you it's less than 10%. <laughs> um, and as a result, pays these royalties based on the writers and composers of world music. Mm -hmm. So that's why they can easily tell you, and they pay royalties to St. Lucian writers, regional writers, American writers, everywhere, all over the world. So they are in the best position to basically assess the music industry. And there's no way these royalties could be averted to any other place but where it is recorded yeah. and documented that 90% of the music played in St. Lucia goes out to other artists. In the rest of the other world. writers and yes. composers. On that and point, I would like you to hold it and we're due for a break. The seaside is a great place for recreation, but you should be tsunami smart and know the natural warning signs of an imminent tsunami. If you're on the beach or near the coast, then you feel the ground rumbling and a long, strong shaking. Drop, cover, and hold until the shaking stops, then run to higher ground. If you see the tide receding further out than normal, run to higher ground. If you hear a strange or loud noise coming from the sea, run to higher ground. If you experience any of these signs, run to higher ground, at least 30 feet high or as far inland as possible, or to the third floor or higher of a building, and wait for announcements from authorities for the all clear before it is safe to return. Remember, run, run, run to higher ground. Be tsunami smart. Learn the natural warning signs of a tsunami. There may not be enough time to send out an announcement in the event of a tsunami. This message brought to you by the Viewport South District Disaster Preparedness Committee and NEMO and funded by the USAID Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance. 
Once again, we're back. It's Music Month. We're celebrating St. Cecilia's Day. We're celebrating the musicians. We're celebrating the artists and producers. And we are here in, 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 in a forward direction and to make um, recommendations and to bring awareness to the, 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 the conditions under which musicians and producers operate in St. Lucia and how we could make it more beneficial for the artists, for the writers, for the producers, for the sound system providers and the industry at hand. And gentlemen, I must say, the government has been expending an unprecedented amount of money within the creative industries. Maybe it needs to be articulated a little more as to where, what is going, the creative industries, and how it comes down to the artist. So part of this discussion is also to, to, to give guidance to that, that, that thrust that will eventually and down to the, beneficial, the benefit of us as musicians and producers moving forward. So I want to, 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 to direct the question of how will St. Lucian content support the St. Lucia music industry? Saint how? Lucia content. Well, basically, what you're basically asking is whether more St. Lucian music getting airplay on radio and TV will that help the royalty mm -hmm. situation? Mm -hmm. And it will. Mm -hmm. As long as you have more St. Lucian music played, the royalties will flow to those St. Lucian writers. It's a given. Yes. yes. So that's what, that's in, in, the, in summary, that's what needs to happen. Ian, um, not cutting you short, but um, don't you think that we should have at least 40% of our music played Yes. On the radio and, and yes. television. Yes, then 40% I mean, of the royalties will stay here. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if 40% of that royalty stays in St. Lucia, economically it's good for St. Lucia. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So would it be a policy um, um, requisite or requirement or request uh, to the Minister of Broadcasting and the government that the, the, the musicians would want a X amount, I don't know if it's 40 but X amount, X percentage of the local content played by local radio stations licensed by the government of St. Lucia, that that um, quota be paid, played of local music um, daily? Well, I, I believe 40% is, is, is good for St. Lucia. I, that's my belief. I believe St. Lucia should get 40%, you know, because if 60% of that is going out there, I don't see why 40% 90% of it oh, is Oh, 90, going wow. 90%. Well, guess what? <laughs> we want to get back 40% um, of that yeah. to give exactly. us the 40. Well, let me, let, me, let me go back to Mr. Darius because he, uh -huh. ca he, he, he carries Mr. Many Hats. Is there a process of being a, a DJ? Do A DJ comes with a laptop, comes with the prerequisite skills and uh -huh. very technical, uh -huh. and we have very good technical DJs. But... Is, is there something more? Is there a, a, a psychology behind being a DJ? Your purpose, your sense of nationalism, and the fact that a DJ could, could, could actually um, um, fashion a, a trend, a mood. I believe uh, so. I believe so because you see it often, like very often. I mean, we have certain St. Lucian ambassadors such as um, Hyper D, Sir Lancelot, who actually yes. goes out there and represents St. Lucia to the fullest. I mean, they play every single genre of St. Lucian music. You understand? So being on radio, it's very different from playing in a crowd. You understand? Mm -hmm. With the crowd, you actually get that immediate crowd response. Mm -hmm. And again, certain events would call for certain songs and whatnot. But being on radio, it's purely up to you. You set your own vibe. You set your own pace. Mm -hmm. And it kind of has to do with the radio manager to a certain extent. Um, literally directing what um, sort of programming it is that they want. For example, I know in February, um, there's, I know there was this national competition for yes. radio stations. Yes, yeah. um, whoever played the most uh, national uh, music coming from mm -hmm. St. Lucia would be awarded some sort of prize. Yeah. I mean, that 
is a step in the right direction. Well, why do you say that should be a step in the direct in the right direction? Do, don't you think that why we have to, we have to we have a competition, competition for that? That's the thing. It should not be the case. It <laughs> yes. really should not be the case. There should be that sense of patriotism. Yeah, and everything on that. So because just what earlier this year we went to Barbados. Remember, Ian went to yeah. Barbados and for for international bashment Soka Monarch. And I mean every radio station you flip through in Barbados, you yeah. hear a Bajan track. You, right, every right. single one all that's the right. time yes it's, and that's and probably that's for I, you i really think there there's this uh, mm -hmm. lack of patriotism on our yeah. part mm -hmm. and we should really focus less on commercialism to a certain extent because i mean we have like what almost what 20 something radio stations in solution yes. yes wow unprecedented yeah. most mm -hmm. per capita in the caribbean exactly and, Mr. And, Sanchez. and less than 20 percent are licensed and paid yes that's i was get, getting that to you less the, than 20 the, the, the artists who are out there listening um they probably not aware because mm -hmm. artists don't. like me i go and i perform on some radio stations mm -hmm. we listen to them there is this unwavering support and allegiance to these radio stations exactly from the echo standpoint could you tell me where the compliance um factor is concerned where our local radio stations are compliance is at an all-time low so they don't pay royalties some do I, as I said, less than 20% pay. Yes. And that's a problem. And as a result of that, um, the artists cannot. The artists don't get any royalties. Yeah. But, Ian, what can be done to literally fix that, turn that tide? Hmm. Talk to um, Ministry, Ministry of, um, of, of Broadcasting. Broadcasting. Let them know we need legislation to mitigate that. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, there is uh, legislation there. There is. Well, why, not, just why isn't not it being enforced? Um, well, I don't know if there is um, um, legislation, but. Um, once again, we, we're here with the artists, uh, we're here with the movers and shakers of this industry, and I'm hoping that the Ministry of Broadcasting is listening. I hope St. Lucia is listening. There's a wealth, a plethora of, of artistry and talent in this country. We are waiting to exhale the producers, the singers, the performers, and that the government even with financial support, that what they're saying that we need more than um, financial support. We need administrative support and we need legislative support that we could take whatever is expended towards the arts and creative industries and make it lucrative. So, you know, um, so then in that case, um, Balance Inc. can profit, um, Echo can be. Um, could 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 have that 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 it could could pay more pay, to its pay members. more royalties yes, exactly. to to the artists the denry segment and the, the 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 development of it it could go further and that as the nation we are because arts is what's going to propel this nation forward and I hope the powers that be are listening and I think we're on the right track as far as support is concerned but we also have to. To, to, to depend on ourselves as business people, entrepreneurs, and, and thinkers that we, we have the nation depending on us and we can shape the nation in whatever direction we are concerned. Brilliant. So Sorry. once again, I would like to say uh, it has been a pleasure being here. Your presenter, Buffalo Odlam, it's Music Month, and in collaboration with the government of St. Lucia, we are presenting a whole month of activities. Most of these will be unveiled. We have a, a press conference coming up, and it's all about the music, musicians, and the music industry. So stay tuned, St. Lucia. There are big things coming up. Once, once again, I'd like to wish you happy Music Month, happy St. Cecilia's Day, and look out for us. We're coming for you. All about the music.